Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new here, my name is Lucia. I was thinking, how do I start today's video? And then I thought, well, honesty, honesty is always the best way, at least in my opinion. So I will be honest with you guys, even though I'm super, super excited for spring to come, for making all the beautiful dresses, and trust me, I have a lot of ideas, but it's still cold outside and making dress seems to me like really a necessary thing. Uh, so I will put this aside for a moment, but for now I was thinking, let me just see if there are some gaps in my closet that needs to be filled. So I started to open the drawers. I don't have any normal pajamas. It was full of old pajamas, pajamas that are too big for me or they are too small or classic situation where you take an old t-shirt and you start to use it as your pajamas. I have a drawers full of cotton poplin and I thought this would be perfect opportunity for me. I know how to sew, so let's stop making excuses. Come on guys, isn't it exciting to open the drawer and you have stack of cute pajama sets? I mean, there is something exciting about that, at least for me. So, as I said, I have drawers full of cotton poplin fabrics in many different prints, but today I choose to work with this one because just look at it. It's too cute. And then I picked up also some blue piping, which I have never worked before, but hopefully, fingers crossed, everything will go well. For the pattern, I didn't have any specific uh, pyjama pattern in my stash, but I have a lot of sewing magazines, so I knew for sure that I'm going to find some pattern for a simple button-up shirt. It was very easy. I had a couple of options, but I was looking for something really, really simple easy and fast to make. So this is the pattern that I'm going to use. Very, very simple shirt. And for the pants, I remember that I already had uh, some pattern that I copied from my shorts with the simple elastic waistband. And I thought I would just make them long and that would be perfect because I know they already fit me well. So this was a win. So without further ado, let's just start. So let me just quickly show you all the pattern pieces. Uh, these are for the top, for the shirt. This is facing, which I already overlocked and I interface it. This is uh, the piece for the cuffs. I also put fusible interfacing on to make it more stiff. Then I have collar, pocket, little sleeve, two front pieces and one back piece, which is cut it on fold. For the pants, it's very simple. I have two front pieces, two back pieces and the waistband. Mine will have uh, elastic inserted in except this panel in the front. So this will be the part uh, that doesn't have uh, elastic. I guess let's just start with uh, making the shirt because this is more fun part. The pants, it, it's going to be very easy, very simple. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I already prepared everything. I made my life much easier. So now I will just go and make the pockets first. So the next step is to sew the collar. As you can see, I have two pieces. I will just place them right sides facing like so and sew them all around with a seam allowance of one centimeter. Of course, I will need to iron it because right now it's just rolling. Let's do the cuffs now. So I already ironed it in a half, so I will just go ahead now Turn it like so, right sides facing, and sew it with a one centimeter seam allowance. Okay, so I have these two cuts here. Let's do the sleeves now. I think this will be good as a next step. So I already pin it, right sides facing. Let's give it a straight stitch. Of course, I will go ahead and overlock the edges to stop fraying. If you don't have a serger, then you can just use zigzag stitch or 
any overlock stitch on your machine. So as a next step, I will go ahead and attach my pocket on the front piece. This kind of stitching is much stronger over here, so it will not start to rip at the edge, at the corner here. So whenever you do a pocket like this, give it a try. So the next thing will be to actually assemble the main bodice. I will take these two front pieces. I will take the back piece and lay it on the top. Of course, right sides facing. First, I will go and pin shoulders and then the side seam, of course. I overlock all the seams from inside, the sides and the shoulders. And now I will go ahead and attach the collar. So I will start to pin it from the center of the back. What's left of me? I will go sew it from here until here. The next step should be to sew the facing, but because I already forgot with the color, I'm not going to forget it right now. And it is about this piping. So this should be going somewhere like around here. I was thinking, I don't know that for sure because I have never done it before, but I just think that maybe it would be a good idea if I go ahead and I attach it with a basting stitch on the facing. So I don't have to use a lot of pins. So guys, I did it, I did it, this is how it looks like, I think not bad at all and I just want to say, so first I put the basting stitch uh, but then I remember that I have this foot which is used for attaching piping and I have this foot because I remember I ordered a long time ago this set of uh, presser feet. It was very inexpensive and I was like, I'm sure there will be this type of foot. It, it has almost every foot that ever existed. So let me tell you, if you're ever going to make a piping, definitely buy this foot because I think I wouldn't manage to make it so nice without it. So, this is where I have left yesterday, guys. A quick update. I discovered <laughs> by my own experience yesterday that I have bought wrong uh, piping. It's too big and it's too thick. So I guess it's not the best for making such project. I think it would be better for making pillows and things like that, this kind of nature. So I was struggling at this point over here and uh, I tried to make cuffs yesterday on the sleeves. I totally failed on this part so probably I will have to cut new cuffs and just do it without piping because it's just so bulky in the seams. It's just not possible so I know next time if I want to make pyjamas with the piping I have to buy a different one. Sewing is beautiful. It's a never-ending process of learning and this is one of the things that I love about sewing. Maybe for some people it can be discouraging. It is for me at the moment but overall I really enjoy this process of learning every time I sew something. So let's continue today. Let's make new cuffs. Let's attach the sleeves and let's make uh, pants as well, which will be very easy because I have done it many times already. color personally I prefer to finish this by hand because it looks much better for the bottom I will 
go ahead and sew it from here until here approximately three centimeters from the edge but as I'm thinking right now I should go ahead and first just overlock the edges Just go with the scissors and cut this corner because you don't want to have any bulk there. Uh, just like this is enough. And now we should be able to turn it right side out. So now when you fold it like this, you can see that it gives you kind of guide of how much should be your seam allowance. So now for the pants, it's going to be very easy. We have only five pattern pieces. We have two back pieces, two front, and then we have the waistband. Of course, I'm going to need elastic, but that's depending on how wide uh, you want to make your waistband. Generally, I wouldn't suggest too thin because it will not be comfortable. But also, if you make it too thick, uh, that can also end up being not very pleasant. So mine is, um, let me check quickly, mine will end up uh, 5 cm wide. So I have one back piece, one front piece, and I will join them together like so. So the other back piece, front piece. I'm going to sew the side seam and the inner seam of the each hand leg. Okay, so now I will turn one leg right side out and one I will keep just like that and then I will place this one inside so this is how it looks like now just a straight stitch and then overlock I will attach the waistband to it so only from the beginning of elastic all the way around until the other end and this I will leave it as a gap to feed my elastic through. So now basically the last thing is to close this gap and then overlock the seam and, and I will just try them and see uh, how much I need to hem because I'm just guessing that they are too long for me and then I will be basically done. Dreamers of the 